Today I want to talk about the topic of JavaScript modules. I want to chronicle how we load JavaScript from the past and all the way to the future today in 2016. Now JavaScript has come from a long history back in uh, several years ago where Brendan Ike created the language in 10 days and JavaScript from the earlier days it was meant to be simple script to you know make the web page more interactive but as the time goes on the browsers are getting stronger and po more powerful so and our applications started to move into the web form and it become it became very uh, advanced so it, the emergence of apps on the web are pretty much the reason the evolution of modules are um, module loadings are created so I'm going to go over you know how we load JavaScript modules the classic way of loading JavaScript it's pretty much everybody should be familiar with this it's basically you include the script tags on the body of the HTML document and this is fine as when the application is simple but as you scale your app up you will notice that this way does not scale you don't want um, like hundreds of these script, script includes on your uh, documents because a typical application will have hundreds or thousands of files and this way of loading script it's definitely not ideal and each script loading is a request to the server to fetch the file so this will make your site or application slower and these things needs to be in order so if I put them in this order that means I'll require jQuery first and then I require slick and then finally my script so they need to be in the order in which they are needed now this is actually a blocking script meaning this will if you put this on the page it will block the DOM when you try to load it so one way uh, that was made popular is to do this this will dynamically insert the script tag on your document asynchronously so the DOM will not get blocked and more recently we use the keyword async here to also accomplish the same thing so this is a classic way which uh, it works for small projects but it definitely does not work well as the application grows so around four or five years ago RequireJS was the flavor of the at that moment a lot of projects started to use RequireJS um, most, I think uh, when I started using RequireJS it was together with BackboneJS so it made sense when you start to use RequireJS to load the scripts um, basically you include this script here which points to require the main which is uh, main.js here so basically uh, it used the AMD model of the loading modules you basically say I want this, 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 this to load first and then I want to give them alias names like you know they have to be in the same order in which you defined them earlier and this will make these variables available to your application and you, now you have access to these things and you can start writing your code in there and this is the AMD pattern and I put a link in the tutorial where you can go read more about it RequireJS is still used on some projects but it's slowly uh, been taken over by CommonJS which I will go over now CommonJS it's actually the the mod the pattern that Node.js uses. So if you ever play with Node.js, this will look very familiar to you. It's this require function here. So here's let's go over what this thing does. So if you look at math.js, so all you have to do is to export a function, right? You have to do module.exports dot the name of the function, and then you put the definition there. This will export this add function from math.js so in my speak.js right here's how I can import it basically you want to require the actual file name and then the function name and you will now have access to this function so if I want to invoke the function all I had to do is say add and then the parameters this function here was defined in math.js so require.js makes it a lot simpler and I mean sorry common.js makes it a lot simpler and easy to reason about 
you basically import and export the functions you want. And I can further from export this uh, speak. Here, if you notice, I didn't give it a name. So that would export the default function here to the speak module. And then in my main.js, I um, basically want to uh, just require the speak module, and then all of a sudden I have this function. So this uh, it, it's very nice, and you can actually do nested requires. It makes uh, apps so complicated application requirements like module imports very simple and easy to reason about. So uh, it's still in use in Node.js. So if you uh, are interested in Node.js, this is something you definitely need to get your head around. Now, modern day uh, JavaScript, it's ES5. I mean, sorry, ES6 and or ES2015. The proposal was to use the module uh, system. So in ES6, you can do uh, fun things like this. Let's go to Foo.js. It's very similar to CommonJS, except the keywords are different. You have export default this function. So the keyword default here will basically import this as the main function of this module. So when I go to index.js, I can just import you know, I can import any name I want. I can call it whatever I want from foo. But when I when the compiler goes to foo.js, it knows exactly the function that it takes because this is a default export. So meaning if I want to import whatever I want, whatever I want, but from foo.js, it will by default export the function that I specify as defaults. So this is like the basic basic way for exporting and importing. It's a default import. Now you can do named import export. Let's go to foo.js again. Now here I have the default function again. This time I call it get dinner. Um, but you notice here I have other exports. So you can export multiple things from a single file. Here I export a function called get breakfast and a function called get lunch a string called bass and a const of arrays called abc. So you can export multiple things. And how do you import them? Let's go to index.js. You basically need to use this destructuring uh, syntax to get the proper function from the module. So I have a tutorial on what this destructor uh, symbol means. Uh, you, I'll have put a link in the description. But for now, basically this is a syntax. Here I'm importing the get breakfast function from foo. So if you go to foo, here's the get breakfast function. I'm just importing that. So you can import specific uh, function from the module. You can also chain them together by doing a comma delimited uh, you know, syntax. And here, notice this one. This one looks very weird, right? So here, you notice that I am importing bass and letters from foo. However, what is dinner time? So dinner time, remember, is the default function. If I call it whatever I want, it will export. If it, if it couldn't find any match, it will just get the default function to, act, act to be exported. You, um, you have to pay attention because this is not in destructure. When it's not in destructure, it will import the default function for you. And then finally, if you look at this here, so it's the same type of data we have here for FooJS, you can actually alias it, meaning you want to import get breakfast from Foo, but I want to call it my own get breakfast, meaning you can call it whatever you want, but with a different name. This way you can, uh, this will avoid any namespace conflicts from your projects and the module that, you know, that is you're using. So this is a very, you know, simple introduction introduction to how we're loading modules today. I think uh, ES6 module is very nice and it's really simple to understand. And I hope in the future it will retain as the main way of how we're doing things. And with that, I leave you to uh, try these out in the in my repo on GitHub which I'll put in the link in the description. Oh, I also wanted to let you guys know that I uh, the Twitter account for Pentacle now 
provides uh, links to all the interesting articles that we have for web dev. So I highly suggest you guys give me a follow at PentaCovid on Twitter. So let me know what you think. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next time.